We know that NBA players go through hot streaks and cold streaks, especially during a game. And in this video, I'm presenting to you a fascinating statistical trend that might be hard evidence for how a player's mentality can affect his game. What's up guys, welcome to MDJ, my name is Mark, hope you're having a great day. And before I continue, I want to give credit to the Reddit thread that inspired this post, so I'll link it down in the description below. So Lou Williams was a six man of the year candidate this past season, and for the last couple years, he's been one of the best bench scorers we have in the league. He's the classic microwave type player, someone that shoots from anywhere from the floor, loves to draw fouls and takes, but frequently makes difficult shots. There are games where he literally looks like one of the best scorers in the NBA, and also games where he looks like he just doesn't belong in the NBA. With his play style, there's no doubting that he's a very hot and cold player as we would traditionally say. So with basketball fans like us, we can look at a player at Lou Williams and say, this guy is a total wild card. But do we have any evidence for that? I mean, what we've talked about so far is interpreted from us basketball fans watching him play, but do the advanced metrics support that statement? It turns out it does. Last season, Lou Williams played 23 regular season games for the Rockets after he got traded from the Lakers. In those 23 games, there were 7 games when he made his first shot and 16 games when he missed his first shot. In the games he made his first shot, he averaged 19.4 points per game on 51% shooting. When he missed his first shot, he averaged 12.3 points per game on 32.3% shooting. And this trend continued in the playoffs as well. The Rockets played 5 games against OKC, 6 games against San Antonio, so 11 games total. Out of those 11 games, there were 3 games where Lou Williams made his first shot and 8 games where he didn't make his first shot. When he made his first shot in the playoffs, he averaged 18.6 points per game on 56.7% shooting and when he missed his first shot, he averaged 11.9 points per game on 35.6% shooting. Now before we talk about why this makes sense, I'll address the question that I know a lot of you will probably have right now and that's whether or not this is a case of just small sample size. Well, there's really only one way we can judge whether or not a statistical trend is a case of small sample size, and that's using statistical analysis. So the short answer to that question is no, this is not a case of small sample size. This is a legitimate trend. The long answer is, the long answer is pretty long. If you wanna skip this nerdy portion of the video where I dive deep into statistics, feel free to fast forward. But for those interested, here it is. In statistics, the way we determine whether or not something is a small sample size is using what we call confidence intervals. As the name suggests, a confidence interval is the range of outcomes that we are confident in as being legitimate, or in other words, the range of outcomes that are not because of small sample size. Statisticians almost always use 95% as the magic number. So in a range of outcomes, the 95% most likely outcomes are all included as things that we cannot confidently say are legitimate, with 2.5% on both ends of the range as as statistical anomalies. And these statistical anomalies are anomalies in the sense that there is determined that there's some outside factor that is causing this anomaly and can't be explained statistically by just variance. Now let's apply this to Lou Williams. Take all of the shots he's ever taken as a Houston Rocket, including the playoffs. So 386 field goal attempts. Out of those, he made 152, which is 39.4%, his field goal percentage as a Rocket. The confidence interval tells us that based on the sample size, which is 386, and based on the percentage of those he made, which is his field goal percentage, the range of outcomes that we would consider normal are 34.5% to 44.4%. But anything higher or lower than that is part of the 2.5% anomaly on the two ends of the spectrum. Lou Williams, during games when he made his first shot, combining regular season and playoffs, had a combined 52.8 field goal percent. When he didn't, he had a 32.9% field goal. Both those numbers fall outside the range, and so statistically, we would conclude that there is some outside factor that caused this trend. Now I want to clarify that the statistical argument I just presented is simplified. Because if we were to do this 100% correctly, like if this were on a test, we'd have to take into consideration the amount of games he played in for each statistical trend, as well as the amount of average shots per game. And then compare that to the actual amount of games he's ever played as a Houston Rocket. But for the sake of not confusing too much of the audience, and also not making this video like 20 minutes long, so I had to simplify it. I hope that you can trust me when I say that the complicated version, which I also did, yields the same conclusion. <sighs> okay. So we just proved this trend to be statistically abnormal, and that makes us wonder why it is. There's a good chance that if you're watching this video right now, you have either played basketball before or still play basketball regularly, whether on a team or in pickup. And if you do, you've likely noticed that when you make your first shot in a game, it tends to get you going. You feel more confident and you generally play better. 
The same happens with NBA players, especially a guy like Lou Williams who kinda has that pick up baller playstyle to his game. Without statistics, this is merely just a hypothesis or a belief. This statistical trend using confidence intervals proves that there's a tangible effect of the mind on a player's performance, at least in the case for Lou Williams. But what statistics can't tell us is exactly how much of an effect this has. Because basketball is still a sport with lots of variants, and with variants comes uncertainty. So in the big picture, that's what basketball analytics are. When you're dealing with NBA players who are in essence humans, unpredictable humans, and also stuff as abstract as the mentality of a player, there's no way we can quantifiably and correctly predict the outcome 100% of the time. But what statistics can do is provide better information and better context for you to not only determine who to draft, who to sign, how much to pay people, but also in cases like Lou Williams, how to defend him. Just a simple thought, if he really struggles after missing his first shot, could be a good idea to toss your best defender at him instead of on Harden, just so that there's a better chance of Lou Williams missing that first shot. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If this is your first time here, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Check out some other videos on the channel. Most of the videos I make are, are easier to follow than this one. I mean, they're still nerdy, but they're like basketball nerdy, not like confidence interval nerdy. Anyways, thanks for watching. My name is Mark, aka MDJ. See you guys next time. Peace. Feeling kind of strange, feeling kind of off. Don't know what's really going on. I feel like something's up and I can only guess the cause. It doesn't matter when, doesn't matter where. Always hits me when I'm unprepared. I